Today we're heading towards Duga 3, aka Chernobyl 2, also known as the Russian Woodpecker, that enormous over the horizon radar which you can see coming up in the background. You can already kinda make out the proportions of that thing, but of course once we'll get closer, I think you'll be astonished just about how huge that thing is. So here it is, the Russian woodpecker. It was referred to as the woodpecker because it would send signals at about 10 hertz, that's uh, 10 impulses per second, so it would have these, these weird tapping noises that sounded pretty much like a woodpecker. This is what it sounded like. And this was to be heard all around the globe. And that was the exact purpose of that radar. It's an over the horizon radar. So because of Earth's curvature, you could not see from the Soviet side all the way into North America, into the US. So you had to reflect the radar rays on uh, the ionosphere in order to be able to see around that curve. And then use the reflected waves to be able to, for example, detect the early launch of nuclear weapons targeted at the Soviet Union and react appropriately. Oh look, there's a tit. Well, that's a type of bird, seriously. It's that bird singing there. Anyway, so, about the Duga 3 array. It could send at transmission powers of up to 10 megawatts, and the installation is about 160 meters high and 500 meters wide. That's for the main installation, where we're walking currently. If we take a look to the right, you can also see a smaller array. That's for use of different frequencies, I believe and it has a height of only 90 meters. But still, you can see how huge these things are, that's crazy. You'll probably have to watch in HD and full screen, but that's me walking towards it right now. But I'm just a tiny little figure compared to that. The Duga 3 array was put into operation in 1976 and is located about 15 kilometers away from the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. It stopped its operation, its signaling, in 1989. So let me grab you guys, or more like my camera, and take you for a ride. See what's over there? That's a letter. There were lots of letters, also lifts, but in case they were not operational, there were backup letters on every little part of the Duga area. And uh, yeah, that's one of the letters. It looks uh, solidly dodgy. Just about right for me to climb on. Let's go. As you can see, the steps are rather far apart and also pretty much in a 90 degrees angle. So you wouldn't believe how hard it is to climb up this ladder as opposed to a normal ladder, which you normally lean onto something and then you maybe have an 80 degrees climb or something, which is a lot easier than this. But despite being rather careful, I think I'm making quite good progress. But yeah, both my voice and my face give away just about how nervous but also excited I was. So you can see right now I'm standing up at about one third onto the top of Duga, the Russian woodpecker, which is an enormous over the horizon radar. It could see from here all the way into the US to track the launch of nuclear weapons against the Soviet Union. And it's very exhaustive to climb up here because, well, you can see these letters. They're quite crazy. Because if you move on them, you can see they just wobble. So yeah, this shit is quite crazy. Well, I am crazy, I guess. Let's move on. That was the audio-visual footage from the climb, with the way I talked. And you could see my voice is shaking, pretty much very similar to the way it would be shaking when I'm talking to about 500 people in an auditorium. But, well, in the next bit, you can see me talking to my guide, who was shouting up to me, pleading me to please come back down because, well, it could be an issue in these times with the terrorist threat and everything. So, yeah, I was standing there. It was reasonable to assume that 
if I climbed up much further, people, or more like this militia, which were around just really everywhere. Normally you're not supposed to film them, but uh, th these guys were in the dark, so their faces are not visible. And they were literally everywhere, on every corner, on every bridge. And it didn't used to be like that back when I was there the last time. So, yeah, I was standing there having to make a decision, a tough decision. Should I go up? and risk being seen from the road, from the militia. After all, tomorrow I have an appointment to go inside of the nuclear power plant, which is quite a privilege, so should I really risk that just to go to the very top of Duga? Ah, decisions. Okay, so oh my guide said, sadly a problem to go all the way to the top, because if somebody sees you, that will be a very big problem in this time because there's just been an anti-terrorist uh, procedure and uh, the zone was under lockdown and now they're well, kind of scared I don't really want to be shot with an AK so I think I'll just go back down here you can see I'm about halfway to the top and I have to go back down there just have to make sure Nobody actually sees me because there are buildings over there. So my militia in there. But if they see me, we might get into trouble. So yeah, I'm going back down. Well, technically it's entirely illegal to climb on the Duga. So I guess I'll just have to come back. It's weird how this always happens. Every time the zone gives me something that I can't complete that I need to come back for. It's kind of getting strange by now. But well, so it is. Well, but at least I was far above tree level, so I got a good view of everything, and so did you. So let's make the best out of that situation and move over to the right, where there's the small woodpecker, which I mentioned is about 90 meters high. They actually started to disassemble it for scrap metal, so you can see bits and pieces of uh, the pre-disassembled bits lying about. But for some reason they stopped the disassembly and just left everything in place. I have no idea why. But you can see, these parts are huge. By the way, that sand was brought there after the Chernobyl accident to provide means of radiation shielding. But now it's also good for leaving footprints. As you can see here, there was a deer. Just right at the Duga area, which is now quite a peaceful area. With that weird structure lurking. And it even talks to you. Too bad the camera didn't catch it. But you can hear it creaking and everything. Ah, you can see the radiation levels. The sand is doing good. Quite normal. Up in the woods it's about 0.6 microsievert power, so not too much either. Right, time for a break in the beautiful morning sun. And then we'll head on over to the control rooms and computer rooms of the Duga array.